So the things that I, I, I want to share with you now is what we call the 10 laws of financial success for men. The laws of financial success for men are fundamentally different than any than than women because men have so much responsibility society has not understood how difficult it is to be a man it is really really difficult i mean just the challenge and the pressures of providing for a family is just it can be overwhelming men have to be taught that and they got to be taught that i mean a yay high they got to be taught fundamentally how to take care of, of a family and you have millions of guys today that are hoping a woman takes care of them that are hoping the government takes care of them and this is why you have a fundamentally deficient society because you have men that don't know how to financially care for themselves we're not being taught it in school so many of us are not being taught it at church we're being taught dependency handout Will you do something for me? And that's not the way. I'm telling you, and that's not man law. To, to hope someone's going to do something for you. As a man, it is our responsibility to learn how to take care of ourselves. It is a fundamental uh, system of learning we have to do. And this is what I'm going to teach you right now. Here are the 10 laws of financial success for men. Number one. Get married and stop tricking. Now, let's break this process down. One of the number one economic laws for men is the ability to, to leverage marriage and a commitment. This is what I'm saying. Financially, we lose thousands of dollars to dating women we'll never marry. We lose, some of us lose thousands of dollars to having children with women that we'll never marry child support we lose thousands of dollars due to spending money on things like sex we just talked about it pornography uh, things uh, wasteful spending at the strip club what happens when a man makes a or just kind of has the focus of his mind that marriage is my direction one the government gives you a financial uh, incentive for marriage the other part is is it creates an infrastructure I always tell men that getting married kind of takes one equation of your life off the table we as men have not been taught to search for the right one and spend the rest of our time building our economic future marriage is absolutely for everyone who understands what exactly they want. When people get to a point where marriage is not for them, it's based on their experiences, what they've been taught and what they've seen. So I always say, you know, people say, well, everybody's broke. I said, well, you don't know, <laughs> you need new friends then because everybody's not broke. Okay, marriage is not for everyone. Well, you need new friends to kind of introduce a new idea to you. Marriage is absolutely a very positive thing and can be very, very critical into helping you being an economic success. You have to stop tricking. You got to stop uh, just moving around out here, messing with all these women. It's making you poor. It is making you broke. Not honoring and respecting your marriage if you're already married. And guys, these young guys, we tell these young guys, well, you young, do your thing and date a lot of women. I, oh my God, wow. That's poor man advice. Got no problem with your loving beautiful women. I, I think that's the, I think that's hey, hey. I tell men to go to college for no other reason because there's a lot of women there. That's not what we're saying. I when I say get married, I'm talking that marriage mind. I'm talking about a person who's looking at things from a really serious perspective to understand that women are not a joke. There's a lot of beautiful women around. There's a lot of opportunities to do things, but it's the business mind, the marriage mind. That I am looking to find the right woman for me and bring her on my team. And we're going to build this, uh, our six financial success together. Now, people always say things don't work out the way you planned them. Here's the hook. What I'm saying is a lot of folks, a lot of men have not been taught how to be married. This is why they fail. 
And a lot of things that go on in marriage, we are responsible for even though we didn't do it. See, that's what I'm talking about, about male success. It's a lot of stuff we're being held accountable for we didn't know. It's a lot of stuff that we're being asked to do that we weren't taught to do. And so we come to the marriage deficient and it ends up costing us our marriage, the person we love. Typically, most guys are in love with that first wife. Typically, that's a true statement. But youth, lack of counsel, impulse, bad choices gets us beat and we lose our family. So when I present to you get married, it's the marriage mind I'm introducing as a law of financial success. Men that can really, really focus themselves, you know, when you get married and you find the right wife, like I did, I mean, I didn't start really financially doing well till I really understood the value of a wife and what my wife was placed in my life to do. This is not, this is a principle of success. When you're able to do that, you're able to focus the rest of your time on capital. So this is what I'm saying to the young guys is that, you know, you, when you decide you want to start getting into women, see business has got to be put in place first. I believe getting married young is not a bad thing if you're trained and prepared for it. A law of success is being able to decide on the woman thing, either put it off on the back end or make a decision on it early, someone that can help you build a financial empire. That's what I'm saying. So it's the law of marriage. When you have these dishonest traits and you go and have sex with all these people and have babies by different women, that's financial ruin. And that's what you're doing to your future. So a law of financial success is the marriage mind. Get married and stop tricking. Number two, you've got to choose better friends. People who have these, I don't understand how so many of these athletes, you know, they get to be to be rich and entertainers and rappers, but they bring the hood with them. They bring all their old broke family members. They bring all their old broke friends. Well, listen, you got to think this stuff through. People say, well, you're selling out and you changed. Well, I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope so. I would hope you figure that out. You know, you got to choose better friends. Either you're going to be the person, you, and this is what's key and critical to understand. You cannot help your friends change. You can't help your family members change. You can't. What you do is you can introduce some new thoughts. But you are not responsible for anyone but yourself. And it's not your job to take care of anyone but yourself. You're going to need better friends if you want to be financially successful. Guys that hang with broke people will be broke. If you are saying, I just got rich, but all my family is broke and I'm going to bring my people up. Unless you're introducing education to them to change their life, you are a crutch and you'll all end up broke. You need better friends. So remember, you can't help them. You can introduce knowledge to them and let them take it. If they don't take it, it's not your responsibility. And there are so many men that feel, I don't mean guys that don't even have money, feel economically responsible for their mother. You have athletes that make it to the league, the first thing you're going to do is buy your mother a house. I, I, I can't knock any of that, but how many people have lost everything they have because of these commitments to their family and to bad and old friends? It's been more of those. We know what we're talking about. You got to choose better friends. You have to make some, draw some lines in between family. Guys who cannot differentiate between friends and family, good friends and good family, uh, people who suck them dry, who suck their time dry, who suck their money dry, are going to always be broke. A law of financial success is to choose better friends and better differentiations between family members because this is key and critical. There are some people that are here to borrow and suck you dry and to be a financial burden and it's your job to make better choices in this area number three is to set financial goals without financial goals you don't have a future so many you know less than three percent of the population has financial goals without financial goals you have no financial future you have to have written financial goals you have to have uh, they have to be written down they have to be documented without them you don't have a future Financial goals are critical to anyone who wants to be successful. Until I started writing my financial goals, I was just out here hoping to get rich. I was just out here hoping it worked out. That's not how it works. 
you got to have goals. You got to know exactly what you want to do. I mean, the other day, I literally, I literally went over the next uh, 21 years of my life because I have three kids that I want to set endowments for, and I know how much money I have to save every year for each kid to give them what their dad wants to give them. Okay, to start them off with that stipend, to start them off with a free college education, to start them all off with uh, a vehicle, a new vehicle, to start them all off with a house, and to start them all off with a pay for a wedding. That gives them the ultimate start in life. And this is, so I had to calculate it out. And the numbers were like a little, I got three littles. So I knew how much time I needed for one, I have 17 years. For the other two, I got 19. Okay, so I had to, my goals had to be set out. I know how much I need for me and my wife. And so that's a part of goals and setting these plans.